warning. This radio show contains strong language, excessive use of alcohol and tobacco products, a whole lot of bullshit and nudity. We here at WBWalker.com are not responsible for any lewd behavior, recklessness, illegal acts, or unwanted pregnancies. Directly caused by listening to this radio show. Viewer discretion is advised. tonight's broadcast I'd like to salute a friend of mine, Sister Jackie Pryor, and her hometown of Hermiston, Oregon, population 
uphill. Just jump in where you can and hold on. It's me, it's me. So WB, and I just want to say thank you for each and every one of you here once again, taking the time out of your busy schedules to join me here in Dingus, West Virginia for another mighty fine. Another mighty fine episode here of the Old Soul Video Show. Well, I guess I got two under my belt now, so I can say that right there. Well, on tonight's episode, friends, I'm going to do something a little different than uh, my first episode. You know, I'm going to try every chance I can to get musicians to come down here. As I'm recording this right now, it's Tuesday. This past Friday, I had a musician supposed to come down, and we got some pretty bad ice storms. I know the whole damn country is dealing with all this shit right now, and uh, I figured it wasn't a uh, real good idea, you know, better safe than sorry. To get the uh, fellas to come down here to record some music, and also it gave me the opportunity to uh, do the show right here. This is gonna be like a little mini series I do from time to time, showing y'all what's in my record collection. You know, I kind of have a love hate relationship with social media. Um, I hate all the political shit, but I love seeing people share music they listen to share stuff from the record collections. I've picked up quite a few records over the years and seeing folks, you know, share what they're spinning. And that's one thing I love to do when I'm out here in the old barn and grill. I, if you follow me on Instagram especially, at Old Soul Radio Show, I, uh, when I can, I let y'all see what I'm listening to when I'm just sitting out here just having a big-eyed time, you know. So, uh, like I said, this is going to be a mini-series that I show you all some of the records I have in these crates under my church pew and lining the old walls of this old barn and grill here. I got over a thousand records and plan on showing you each and every one of them, you know, as I get the chance to do it. But that being said, I'm going to start the show out with a record that uh, probably not too many of you probably familiar with. Uh, this record right here was put out back in 2012. It's called 10 and 20. It's what it's called. It features 10 different artists from in and around the Lexington, Kentucky area. Oh, brother D. Wayne Lundy produced it, and uh, it's a pretty good one. It's got Coralie and the Townies there on it, and uh, years ago I featured her here on the Old Soul radio show, and uh, it's got a song on here that uh, makes this record pretty special. Now, I know some of you's probably going to... I know what you're going to say, so I'm going to stop you before you say it. You know, Sturbs will just put out these two uh, Cutting the Grass records. I know he reworked some Sunday Valley songs, but to my knowledge, this is the only vinyl record that actually has a Sunday Valley track on it. It's got the song Goodbye on here, and uh, like I said, friends, it's a, uh, it's a damn good record that I'd highly recommend that each and every one of you, if you can, to pick it up. It's uh, probably not the easiest to find, but... Uh, like I said, it came out in 2012. I don't know if the website is still up. But if you go to the number 10, N-I-N-20.net, you might be able to buy one. If not, if you're around the Lexington area, you might be able to find one at a record store. eBay, Discogs, I'm sure if you look hard enough, you can probably find you one. But like I said, it's a damn good record. I'd recommend each and every one of you pick up. This second record here, you know, it means a lot to me. You know, anybody that's big fans of Hank Williams, you know that Hank was pretty heavily influenced by old Roy Acuff. You know, he signed a publishing deal with Acuff Rose, and that was Roy Acuff and Fred Rose's uh, little operation there. And I know that Hank, like I said, was a big fan of Roy Acuff, and after Hank passed away, old Roy Acuff put this record right here out. It's called uh, Roy Acuff Sings Hank for the First Time. And it's a damn good record. It's got a bunch of, you know, Hank's hits on it. And Hank might not have been around to uh, listen to it, but I guarantee you that uh, this right here would have meant a lot to him, him being such a big fan of old Roy Acuff. So if you ain't never heard it, check her out. Now this second one here, I'm pretty sure it's just the same exact record, but it's just a different pressing of it and uh, all that good stuff. And... Uh, I don't think that uh, it really has much on there that the other one don't have. They're both called Sing Hank Williams for the first time, so pick you one up. If you're an OCD nerd like me that 
if a record's got a different label or a different cover or whatever and you got to have both of them, well, you've seen both of them. Next record here, I'm not such a huge fan of this band. I mean, they was pretty big back in the 80s and growing up in the 90s for me, I heard them quite a bit, but uh, my brother Josh Green gave me this record right here. Like I said, I like some of their stuff. Not the biggest fan of it. Here is Alabama, the closer you get. Now, it's a pretty damn good record if you like Alabama. You know, in my opinion, it's probably one of their better records. Like I said, I ain't the biggest fan in the world. But every now and again, especially when I think of old Josh Green, I pull this one out and listen to it from time to time. Well, this record right here, I just featured this fella probably less than 20 episodes back on the Old Soul Radio Show. And uh, a brother Mitch from Minnesota sent me this record right here. It's a damn good one. And like I said, I liked it enough to play it on the Old Soul Radio Show. So here's a record right here from old brother David Allen. It's called Regrets and Retribution. Like I said, if you go over to wbwalker.com or on iTunes or Stitcher, wherever you listen to my show, you can search for David Allen over at wbwalker.com but on iTunes or Stitcher. If you just scroll back, you won't have to go too far. If you scroll back a little bit, you'll see the episode I've done with old David Allen here. It's a damn good one. I'd highly recommend uh, picking this one up if you if you can. Now this next record here, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Outlaw Country. They're on Sirius XM, and I picked this record up, and I didn't really know that it kind of had a little bit of a uh, connection to... Uh, Outlaw Country, but if you've ever heard the bits about Burford's Barbershop and all that stuff, a lot of them bits are from this record right here. This record right here is from Alive. It's at the Johnny Mac Brown High School. It's kind of hard to read shit upside down, but it's a pretty damn good record. Like I said, if you're a fan of Outlaw Country, I guarantee you'll hear stuff on here that you've probably heard before. Now this next one here, I think old Josh Green also give me this one. He's pretty good about it. if he picks up records that he already has or he finds a good deal on something, you know, that he uh, just wants to give to me. He picks me up stuff from time to time. So this is the old Almond Brothers band, Win, Lose, or Draw. Like I said, old brother Josh Green uh, picked this one up for me. It's one that uh, I might spend it tonight after this whole show's over because I ain't listened to it in a while. But it's a damn good record, and if you're a fan of the Allman Brothers, I mean, you know how it is. You can't go wrong. But this next record here, man, when it comes to voices and country music, and it don't get much better, in my opinion, than old John Anderson. John Anderson is somebody that he just uh, absolutely, he just got a voice that uh, I don't think ever is going to be duplicated, you know. he uh, He's one of the best, and... This one right here is John Anderson and all the people are talking. It's one that I picked up a while back and uh, it's got some good ones on it. It's got a black sheep on here and if you're a fan of John Anderson, I mean, you know, you can't go wrong with little John Anderson from time to time. Now this next record here, it's also a John Anderson record, but it's, there's a little story behind why I picked this one up. Now, I got a buddy of mine, his name's Mark Conley. And uh, the first time I heard the song Wild and Blue, it made me think of old Mark Conley because Mark Conley is the biggest, and I don't care who you are. I don't care how much you want to argue. Mark Conley is hands down the biggest Kentucky Wildcats fan that has ever probably walked God's green earth. And he might not be so much no more, but Mark used to be a pretty damn wild fella. Back in my younger days, when I would get into more trouble than uh, I needed to, and I'll leave it at that. I used to hang out with Mark and it got to a point that uh, Mark didn't call no more. And I told him one time, I said, Mark, I said, if you called me and asked me to come to church with you and you told me that Jesus and Moses were going to make a guest appearance, I don't think Fallon would let me go. But like I said, this record here has always made me think of old brother Mark Conley. This is John Anderson's Wild and Blue. It's probably my favorite John Anderson record. If you ain't never heard it, Pick it up. It's a damn good one. Now, something cool about my radio show that I've got to do over the years is, um, is getting to know or, 
or meet folks that I listened to before I started doing the radio show. And one of those musicians right there is a fellow by the name of Casey Anderson. And Casey had a song that I heard years and years and years ago. I think I first heard it on Pandora. It's called uh, Don't Look Back. I used to listen to it over and over and over. And I actually got to know Casey a little bit, talk to him. He's a pretty good fella, and uh, he sent me a few records there a while back. And I enjoy listening to him. Uh, like I said, Casey's a damn good songwriter. I know a lot of folks like Isbell and fellas like that think a lot of him. So if you ain't familiar with Casey Anderson, make sure you change that one. And this one right here is called Nowhere Nights. It's a damn good one. And I'm sure over at Casey Anderson's website, you can probably still pick you up a copy, I would imagine. Here's another one old brother Casey Anderson sent me. This one right here is called Heart of a Dog. It's another damn good record that, uh, like I said, I couldn't recommend more. So if you're a fan of Casey or if you've never heard him, likewise, you can search Casey Anderson or WBWalker.com. It's probably a little ways back if you scroll through it, but I've played him on the Old Soul Radio Show numerous times. So if you ain't never heard this record, likewise, uh, check her out. Now, I've always been a fan, like you know, of old Hank Williams. And, you know, Hank got his start, I guess, before he kind of made it on the Opry on the old Louisiana Hayride. And this is a compilation of uh, a bunch of different artists that uh, played live, you know, on the Louisiana Hayride. It's got George Jones and uh, old, uh, Johnny Horton and got quite a few folks on there that I guarantee that uh, you're probably fans of. Now, well, Hank Williams ain't on this one right here, but like I said, I bought this record because it just made me think of old Hank. But like I said, if you're a fan of uh, live recordings, kind of like an Opry type recording, you can't go wrong with this one. Now, somebody that I think that uh, when it comes to country music guitarists, I mean, it don't get much better is old Chet Atkins. And I picked up a few Chet Atkins records there a while back. And this one right here, and it's a damn good one. If you've never listened to it, I'd highly recommend that you do. It's called, it's a Guitars World. And you can probably pick it up probably pretty cheap, I'd imagine. Wouldn't be too much for you. So if you ain't never heard it, check her out. This is another one from old Chet Atkins. This is a old gospel record. This is Chet Atkins plays Back Home Hymns. That's another one that uh, every now and again I throw her on on a Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon and just go to town with her. So uh, that sounds like it might be up your alley. There you go. Now this next musician, before I show you his picture, I'll ask you a question. Have you ever seen the movie The Goonies? Well, on the, the first Goonies, I can't think of the main character, but his dad, the one that's all the time making all that shit, you know, uh, inventions and stuff, uh, his dad's a fellow named uh, Hoyt Axton. And this isn't just like a uh, novelty thing. Uh, Hoyt Axton's a real damn deal. He put out quite a few records. And if you ain't never heard him, you need to write that wrong right there and check him out because I tell you, old oh, Hoyt Axton, he's hard to beat. I got quite a few of his records you'll see here in a minute. He's somebody that I listen to uh, quite a bit. So if you ain't familiar with old Hoyt, you need to uh, get on that old ship right there. This one right here is another Hoyt Axton record. It's called uh, Less Than The Song. It's another damn good record. Every Hoyt Axton record I'm about to show you, and they're just top notch. So. Here's another one for you. If you get the chance to check out, you can uh, check her out. This is old Hoyt Axton Road Songs. Like I said, damn good record. It's got some good ones on there. And when it comes to Hoyt Axton Records, this one right here is probably one I listen to uh, as much as any of them. This one right here is called Life Machine. I think it may have been the, the first Hoyt Axton record I bought, I think. And likewise, it's a damn good one. He does some pretty pretty good songs on air. He does a cover of old Maybelline and and uh, 
Like I said, just a damn good record. If you get a chance to check her out, go ahead and do it. But I tell you, when it comes to folks that wrote uh, just good old beer drinking songs, it don't get much better than old Mo Bandy. Here's old Mo Bandy swimming in a mug of beer. Here I am drunk again. And if you ain't familiar with Mo Bandy, I cannot re recommend him enough. Old Mo Bandy, Joe Stampley, them records they put out together, I'm telling you, it's just top-notch stuff. You, you can't beat it. If you're sitting around drinking and you want something to kind of fit the mood, just put some Mo Bandy and Joe Stampley on and you want to set the set yourself up good for the evening. Here's another old Mo Bandy record. This one right here is called Love is What It's All About. Or Love is What Life's All About. And I'd say that uh, that's about as true a statement a fella can make. Like I said, this just is another damn good record that uh, you can't beat them. When these fellas was big, you know, when they was in their prime back in the late 70s, early 80s and stuff, I mean, they were all over the radio. And it's just hard for me to kind of wrap my mind around it sometimes, just how there was a time years ago that most of your popular country music that was played was drinking songs. You know, you don't hear that much no more, especially on country radio nowadays, but uh, like I said, if you can find any more bandy, if you can pick them up at a record store, or you just want to buy some online, kind of like I do, because I ain't got no really good record stores or nothing close to dingus here. If you run across any more bandy, you pick it up. I was talking about Mo bandy and Joe Stampley, them fellas right there, like I said, when, uh, when they do that together, it just don't hardly get much better. This one right here is probably one of their most popular records. It's Mo Bandy and Joe Stampley, just good old boys. That's all they are, just a couple good old boys. It's a damn good record that uh, probably out of all the records I've showed you so far, this is the one that I probably spend the most. It's one that I always, at least once every, I mean, I got a lot of records, but probably once every couple weeks I pull this one out and, and go to town with her. Now something I'll address while I'm thinking about it, because I had a few people ask me, is that, uh, you know, you see me on the first episode where I was sitting around and uh, sipping on a beer when old Darren was playing, and I've made it pretty common knowledge that I don't, uh, I don't get drunk more. And uh, I'm telling you the God's honest truth, I don't get drunk no more. But sobriety, friends, is all about finding what works for you. You know, some people never drink anything ever again in their life because they can't. Some folks can't be around it because they just can't handle it. And just everybody kind of has to find their own path when it comes to sobriety if that's what you want to do. But with me, uh, I went from like January of last year to probably, well, right around the time Prime died, May, something like that with hardly even listening to music because I'm scared to death that if I listen to these old sad songs, it's going to spin, you know, send me back down a spiral type deal. And uh, so I went almost six months without listening to anything. And I got to the point where, you know, if I wanted a beer, I'd just buy me like a six pack old Duels or non-alcoholic Bush or Budweiser Zero or something like that. And I, it was okay, but I just didn't care a lot for it. Like I said, if you think bad of me for saying this, I mean, whatever you want to do, but uh, what I do is when I want a beer, I'll tell you this, you've heard of Arnold Palmer, you know, half lemonade, half iced tea. When I want a beer, I usually pour half a near beer, a non-alcoholic non beer, and half a uh, PBR, light beer, whatever, I got, and uh, I can sit around, listen to music, drink on them, and I don't get drunk. I don't even get a buzz. I don't get stupid. I don't act a fool. I don't hang over the railing on this old barn and grill and act like an idiot, you know. And it's kind of my happy medium. And I'm not saying that if you're sober, if you don't drink anything to try it, because it might not work for you. But if you're somebody that wants to quit drinking, but haven't, took the next step yet I mean try it I mean it's worked for me and uh, you know, maybe it might work for you 
But this record right here, it's one that I can remember listening to very early on. And uh, the first song on it, uh, Wouldn't It Be Nice, I remember I used to listen to it probably when I was 18 years old, back before me and Fallon really got super serious. I mean, before we got engaged or anything, there's some lyrics to the song, Wouldn't It Be Nice, and it talks about wouldn't it be nice if we were older. And I used to just think about that, you know, wouldn't it be nice if I was older and we could go ahead and get married and all that stuff. I just hated having to wait and all that stuff. And uh, it's one that is an absolute classic. I'd say that it's probably, when it comes to maybe records, period. You know, a lot of folks have it in their top 10, if not higher. But if you never heard Pet Sounds from the Beach Boys, check her out. It's a perfect record. There's a reason that folks think of it so highly. It's that damn good. But this next record here, it's one that, uh, hell, I just featured it on the last Old Soul Radio Show. This is the Just Behind the Creek field recording at Kicking It On The Creek 2019. It has it's got Brother Don Rogers on it, Montana Hobbs. It has Walter DeBar. It's got, uh, hell, it's got old, the professor, old Jesse Wells on there, Abe Partridge. It's got Sonora on there, Padre Paul Handelman. It's a damn good record. Like I said, I just featured it a couple episodes back. So if you check out the show notes for that episode right there, there's an Amazon link in there. It's where I bought it. One of the records is like a gold color. The other one is like a black swirl with, uh, some uh, some gold in it. It's a damn good record. It's one of the best uh, compilations or whatever you want to call it that I've heard in a long time. But this next record, I'm going to show you one more before I go take a piss because I'm about ready to, to pee all over myself. This is from a fella that uh, you don't hear a whole lot from no more. You know, he played my, when was he played my five-year anniversary show the second night he headlined the second night of my five-year anniversary show the first time I heard this record right here it blew me away I think when it comes to folks that's doing traditional country music it'd be hard to really find somebody that does it better that's old brother Luke Bell this record right here his self-titled record well this was this is a self-titled record but he actually put out another record before this on CD that was self-titled but this one right here is going to be the one you find if you if you look for Luke Bell Records, and it's, it's perfect from start to finish. He's an absolute genius. I've got to hang out with him a few times when I won that old DJ of the Year award over there in Memphis. We hung out, and I got to spend quite a bit of time with him when he played my five-year show. I love old brother Luke Bell to death, and I just I thank the world of him. But like I said, friends, I'm going to step outside for a minute, and... Uh, Try not to freeze to death because in here right now, I started doing this show at 61 and in what little bit of time I'm talking to you, it's down to 54 because I can't turn none of these heaters on because I could, but it'd probably sound like shit. So uh, I got everything off that makes racket and stuff. So uh, hopefully by the time we get done with this damn thing, I won't be a big old popsicle. Like I said, friends, I'll be back here in a minute and we'll uh, check some more records out. It's freaking cold outside. Ugh. I hope that's dedication for you. Like I said, I had to turn the heat off out here, so I'm gonna freeze my old dick off and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully enjoy this show. That's a labor of love if I ever heard of one. Well, something I'm gonna say to you is that uh, before I show you this next record. And something I want y'all not to do is I don't want nobody commenting on this damn shit because I know YouTube, y'all got the ability to do that. With my podcast, people couldn't comment directly on them. But I know with this uh, video show, it kind of changes all that. But I'm going to show you some records that you probably wouldn't think. If you think of me just being a fan of country music, you might not expect me to have. But I'll say this. When I was growing up, nobody kindly tried to lead me to listen to this or listen to that. You know, my parents, 
grandparents, everybody was always, I mean, I was around a lot of country music, don't get me wrong, but nobody tried to make me only listen to this and that. I seen a post a few months ago, and man, it just kind of, kind of bothered me. I seen somebody post about, uh, I only let my kids listen to Cody Jinks and Ward Davis and this one and that one, and they ain't allowed to listen to nothing else. And I just kind of thought to myself, I thought, man, that's kind of shitty parenting. What I mean by that is I think that uh, a child should be able to kind of find their own path when it comes to music because it's led me in all these different directions and stuff. And uh, I think if you limit what a child can hear and stuff, I mean, their favorite song might be out there somewhere. If you don't let them find it, they might not ever find it. So with that being said, I'm gonna show you a record that uh, has come out in the late 90s. And it's not the first record I heard from this band, but I, after I heard the next record, I'm about to show you, I went back and checked out their discography. And it's a band that's where I still listen to quite a bit. This is the Bloodhound Gangs, One Fierce Beer Coaster. I'll show you something right here. This is the CD for this record right here. And it says place beer here. So I got it sitting on the bar. I listen to old Jimmy Pop, and that's what I do. I place beer on it. Well, this record's a damn good record. Not everybody's gonna like it. But I guarantee you there's quite a few of you probably that see this, and you might not listen to it no more, or hell, you might have listened to it yesterday. But I guarantee you there's gonna be quite a few of you that's uh, probably heard this record. They're a band that, like I said, in the uh, late 90s, I just, I loved them. My first ever probably I guess venture into any type of musical fandom when it comes to websites or anything is I had a Yahoo back when Yahoo was kind of like the big thing I had a Yahoo group that was called the Bloodhound Gangsters and uh, I do not recommend searching for that but anyway uh, it was kind of like my first little thing I'd done and it uh, was just a band that I listened to and you know, when I hear them, it just reminds me of uh, reminds me of all that good stuff right there. But this record right here is the first uh, first record I heard from the Bloodhound Gang. This is old Hooray for Boobies, and it was the one that had the song Bad Touch on it. I guess that was kind of my first time I heard them, and just it's a pretty goofy record, but at the same time, I mean, them guys are. As much as they are goofy, in a way, they're kind of geniuses with the kind of shit they uh, they write and stuff like that. This is one I listen to. It, it takes me back to uh, Y2K and all that shit. You know, I can't tell you where I was at the first time that I ate something, or I can't tell you the first time I done this or that, but I can tell you almost to the exact memory where I was at and what I was doing the first time I heard a certain song. And I just, that's the way my brain's wired. And uh, I tell you, it's, uh, it's something else. That's a blessing and a curse, I guess, because I mean, hey, look at me. I'm standing out here freezing my balls off doing a, uh, a video show showing you my records. But, I mean, I, I just love music. I mean, you all know that. I just love music and it means the world to me. I mean, all jokes aside, it means the world to me that I can stand here in my bar and show you my record collection. And I know folks that's gonna tune in to, to watch this. But this right here is, uh, I know it's not the prettiest album covers, it's the uh, the latest record from the Bloodhound Gang. I think it's called uh, Hard Off. <laughs> and it, uh, it come out a couple years ago. I had never heard it, I just bought it there a few weeks back, I had never heard it. And it ain't nearly as good in my opinion as their other stuff. You know, I'll go all hipster on you, you know. The stuff they put it, their early stuff was so much better. But uh, really, I mean, it's a, still a good record, but I guess a lot of it, the other records, there's a lot of nostalgia and stuff uh, connected with them. But I picked that one up on Discogs. I think it actually got shipped out by the damn band because, like, my PayPal receipt uh, receipt said, uh, like, Bloodhound Gang something. So I think I bought it from them. But this record right here I'm about to show you, I featured this fella right here back on the old soul radio show a few years back 
just like with Darren, we was talking on the last episode, I think Eric Bolander may have come down in late 2017, 2018, something like that, and I recorded him live here from the Barn and Grill, so likewise, if you search Eric Bolander, you can see where I featured, featured this record, and you can see his live show we've done here. But this is The Wind by Eric Bolander. Now, if you go to find it, I think that the, uh, the album artwork and stuff has changed. I think maybe Jimbo Valentine may have done the, the artwork on the latest release of it, but if you just search for Eric Bolander, The Wind, I'm sure that uh, you can find it. This one was also produced by Dwayne Lundy. He's put, uh, well, Dwayne's produced quite a few records. I think he produced that. Ian No EP, Justin Payne's EP, Justin Wells' record, the old early Sunday Valley records. Well, Dwayne Lundy, man, he's had his thumbprints on uh, quite a bit of stuff. I actually, the fella that I recorded there a few weeks ago, old, uh, old David Jamison, he reached out to me asking me about a, he's from South Bend, Indiana, he asked me about recommending a uh, record producer and I recommend Dwayne to him and that's who is cutting his record, Dwayne, so I was glad to kindly have a part in that one. This one right here is a soundtrack from a TV show that uh, growing up, my grandpa used to watch it all the time. And, I mean, hell, I still watch it myself quite a bit. But it's uh, one of the soundtracks from old Bonanza. And this is just a damn good record. You know, all the old cowboy songs and stuff on there. It's one that if you're a fan of the show, you can uh, pick this one up. It's one I guarantee that you won't be disappointed with. Now this record right here, I'll tell the story behind it. Um, I was on Instagram there probably about a month ago. And I, a lot of the times, you know, like on the uh, explore button where you can like see posts from people that you don't follow, there was some girl that was making a damn, I guess she had shared one of her TikTok videos on Instagram or something, cause I mean, hell I don't TikTok or nothing like that. But she shared this video and the song in the background, I just was like, wow, you know, what the hell is this song? And it, uh, it blew me away. And I ended up finding the song. It's from uh, some ladies. The Boswell Sisters. This one right here is uh, titled Connie Boswell and the Boswell Sisters. And I don't know how to pronounce it. It says it's J-A-Z-U-M 44. Jasm 44, I guess. But there's a song on here. And if you can't find the record, I mean, it's kind of hard to find. I found it on Discogs, and I think it's like the only copy. But check the song out. It's called Traveling All Alone from the Boswell Sisters. They were pretty big back in the uh, 30s and 40s and stuff, you know. This isn't country music, but it is country music to me. I mean, it might have, you know, different instruments and stuff on it that you probably traditionally wouldn't hear when you, or think of when you think of country music, but this is country music. Sad lyrics, I mean, just shit that just stops you in your shoes type deal. So like I said, if you can't find this one, I understand, but like I said, listening, listen to uh, Traveling All Along by the Boswell Sisters if you get the chance. Now this next fella here, some of you might be familiar with him. He put out a couple, they're kind of like comedy records, but I mean, he had some pretty heavy hitters that he's friends with that sung on these records. And I, I was thinking the other night, I think Waylon or one of them name dropped him in a song. But he has like Willie and Waylon singing along with him on some of these songs. And uh, he's just, he's a, he's a nut. A buddy of mine uh, that you see in my intro, old Harry Mitchell, old Harry Deskins, he had a buddy by the name of Tuna Smith that passed away uh, a year or so, a couple years back, I think now. But I used to go with Harry over to Tunis's house. We'd sit in his garage and just sit and listen to, to records. Well, not actually records. We'd just sit and listen. Tunis had a computer out there, and he'd get on there and just pull shit up. And you talk about somebody that had a good knowledge of music that, and somebody that was just a, you know, kind of hell of a jukebox type deal because everything he played was good was old Tunis Smith. But he used to play a song for us called Hello DJ by Don Bowman. And if you listen to it, there is an uncensored version and a censored version. Now the uncensored one, it's pretty, pretty raunchy. So if you don't like hearing the F-bomb and all that stuff, uh, maybe try to listen to the uncensored one, but it's probably still gonna be tough to listen to. But that song right there ain't on this record. This is one that, that he put out on RCA. It's called uh, Port Your Local Prison. 
it's a pretty damn good record. Side two, he does like a uh, a kindly cover of Alice's Restaurant, and it's like 18 minutes long. It's the whole second side of the record, but it's one that uh, I might not spend it all the time, or I might not even spend it all that often, but it's one that uh, every time I do listen to it, you know, I get a laugh out of it. But this record right here, it's called Still Fighting Mental Health, Don Bowman, and this is the one that's got Hello DJ and stuff on it. And I mean, I, I'm just a big, big dummy, I swear I am. I, uh, I got this camera out here and Fallon was watching it the other night and I was listening to Hello DJ and I was just laughing my ass off. And she was cracking up, you know, just watching me, uh, watch me laugh listening to this old record here. But when I, every time I hear it, I think of, uh, my buddy Harry Deskins and Otuna Smith and Hello DJ is goofy as the song is. It's actually written by Bobby Bear and it's, uh, just check it out. It's a, uh, one of them songs that it's pretty crazy. It's, it's, uh, Don Bowman calling the Ralph Emery show and trying to get him to play his records. And he gets kind of aggravated because Ralph don't play his record and he, uh, he kind of goes ape shit on him. So it's, it's, uh, it's something else. But this one right here, this is a, uh, just like a greatest hits type deal from old Boxcar Willie. It's called King of the Road, 20 Great Tracks. And it's, uh, if you are a fan of Boxcar Willie, you know you know what to expect. It's a damn good one that uh, that I do break out from time to time. Hearing this one makes me think of old Joe Lee and uh, all them fellas there that used to hang out with at the Moose Lodge here in Wimson, West Virginia. And it, uh, it's a damn good one. This next one here is another old box car Willie record. Best love favorites. It's got uh, Blue Moon of Kentucky and Crazy Arms and quite a few of these more well-known songs he cut you know on there. But it's one that uh, this one and the one I just showed you. If you're not real familiar with Boxcar Willie and you want to uh, dive into uh, his music, that's a pretty good start. This next record here, I'm trying to, Josh Green, I think it was, is who told me about this. And it's from a woman named Carla. And you know me, this old dingus boy, I have a hard time sometimes pronouncing names. Carla Boz, Bozulich, I think, B-O-Z-U-L-I-C-H. And she does a concept record of a concept record. She does Redhead Stranger. And this is one that, I mean, you wouldn't think that anybody could to do something like that, you would think it'd take somebody with pretty big balls, but evidently it took somebody that ain't got no damn balls to uh, to uh, to do this right here and do it justice. I mean, Redhead of Stranger is a perfect record, in my opinion. I mean, it's one of the best country records of all time, and Carla, she definitely puts her own spin on it, and it's one, if you ain't never heard it, you check it out, because this girl right here, she absolutely knocked it out of the park with this one. And when it comes to... Uh, now, if I had to pick out five country music trivia questions to try to stump somebody on, this record right here would probably be one of them. Because back in the 70s, this fella right here, he wasn't just a superstar in the world of sports, but I mean, he was just a, kind of like an icon. He was in all the TV commercials and all that shit. No, I ain't talking about O.J. Simpson. I am talking about Terry Bradshaw. And Terry Bradshaw put out a single cover of old Hank Williams, I'm so lonesome I could cry. And if you ain't never heard it, you make sure that you uh, you check her out. Because I'm telling you, old Terry, he's got the chops. And this whole record's great. And he's put a few different records out, but this is the only one I got. I'm going to try to pick the other ones up eventually. I, I got multiple 45s of his, but this is only 33 I got. But like I said, if I try to stump people, I ask them, you know, what... Uh, NFL quarterback had a semi-hit record. Most people don't think of old Terry Bradshaw. The next band here that I'm going to show you here, back when I was a kid, I used to listen, which I still listen to them quite a bit, but when I was a kid, I was a big fan of them. And it always blew my mind when this damn record came out, or when they, I guess, put their first, I guess the letter was probably their first hit. The lead singer was like 15 years old, and he sounds like, He's 50 years old and real raspy voice and shit and, and stuff like that. And uh, 
a band that's a box tops. This is just super hits, like a, uh, like I said, a compilation, a bunch of their stuff. But I've always been a big fan of the, the box tops and uh, the letters on them songs. I don't care who does it. If old Joe does it or if it's uh, this band doing it, I just, I think it's a great song. Here's a fella that uh, I picked this, I can't remember if somebody turned me on to it, it may have been Dave Prince posting Ochico, or Layback Country Picker posting something about it. I cannot remember. I remember talking to him about it. This is so uh, Savoy Brown, the best of support, uh, Savoy Brown. Just a damn good country rock, you know, southern rock type record. I think these fellas are, are top notch. Just one that every now and again, you know, if I'm in the mood for that type of shit, I'll uh, pull it out and listen to it. So if you ain't never heard any of his music you need to check him out too but this next record here this fella right here is an absolute hero of mine i've been blessed to have him play multiple anniversary shows i just featured uh, featured him not too awful long ago here on the old soul radio show and this record means a lot to me because uh it was recorded i would i would think maybe not a whole lot longer than a year, two years before the Colonel John Hensley passed away. But if you listen to it, you can hear him and, uh, and Mary Spar and Shooter, Billy Don Burns and uh, Shooter's wife Misty having conversations and stuff on it. And as great as the music is on this one, it's an old uh, white vinyl there. As great as the music is on this one, the, uh, the conversation and stuff is just as good. There's a lot of people on this record that uh, you know, it has meant a lot to me and uh, things like that. And from time to time, you know, I'll sit down and listen to it. Like I've said before, old Billy Don Burns is somebody that he's a he's a living legend. There ain't many folks like him left. So it just, uh, I love just talking to Billy Don, sitting around listening to Billy Don. Just he's just a damn good one. And talk about the Colonel. You know, I only got to meet John Hensley once. I talked to him quite a bit through. Uh, Facebook Messenger and texting and stuff and things like that. But I only got to meet him once, and it's the night I actually met Josh Green for the first time. And and this ain't no uh, no shot at Shooter, but uh, I was more nervous to meet uh, the Colonel than I was Shooter because to me, John Hensley, he kind of embodied what cool was. The way he dressed, the way he carried himself, I mean, he just... He's one of them people that he would walk in the room and everybody just stop and look at him type of deal. And uh, I, he's somebody I think about quite a bit and I, I miss having him around. But this next record here, it's one that uh, growing up, mid 90s, grunge music was such a huge part of my life. This record right here, I used to listen to it over and over and over. And I actually just picked it up on vinyl not too awful long ago, probably a month or so ago. But this record right here, Bushes, I think it's the 20, the 25th anniversary, I think that's why it's silver, the, the silver anniversary. Uh, the 25th anniversary there of 16 Stone. This one, I think it's a, uh, it's a clear record. It's, it's pretty cool. The, the recording sounds great. This is the one I spend all the damn time. I just, I still love that type of shit. I mean, I know as much about Kurt Cobain as I do Hank Williams, and that says a lot. You know, I just, uh, I love stuff from back then. Like I said, it's the shit I grew up on during my teenage years and stuff like that. And I just, I, I still to this day, just, I love it. This right here, this is a record by a fella that, uh, I'd say, some of you probably know, quite a few of you ain't probably familiar with, old Johnny Bush. This record's called Undo the Right. It's a damn good record. It's the only Johnny Bush record that I have. But uh, if you've never listened to him or uh, you ain't super familiar with him, it might be a good one to start on. Like I said, it's, uh, it's just a damn good record. I couldn't recommend it enough to you. And me being a... I've been in Dingus here for... Uh, shit, I've been here in Dingus for... Uh, since 2006, almost. I, I bought my house when I was 21. So I been here almost 15 maybe 15 years I've been here and before that I lived for the most part in Kentucky I was born in Pike County Kentucky I grew up 
My mom and dad was together. I lived in Delbarton, West Virginia. I lived in Utah for a while when my dad was in the Air Force when I was real small, like three, four years old. But for the most part, you know, growing up, I lived in Kentucky, but I've been in West Virginia more than I've been anywhere in my life. Like I said, I, I, I lived in West Virginia when, when my mom and dad was married, but, uh, but it's, uh, it's kind of been kind of split as time goes on. Naturally, Dingus is going to be where I've been at longer than anything, but, uh, in West Virginia and Kentucky, there's a reason I got them tattooed on my arm. They both mean the world to me. So this record right here is from, uh, I guess, the longest serving senator and I think in U.S. senator history and all that shit. This old, uh, old Senator Robert Byrd. He plays a bunch of old fiddle tunes and shit on there. And uh, I think the first time I seen this record, I think Jimbo Valentine had, had shared it, I believe. And... Uh, talked about how he was trying to find it for a while but it's just a good bluegrass record and it's pretty cool to have somebody like that that, uh, that plays music so if you like stuff like that old fiddle on records uh check it out this one right here is probably worth a little bit i'd say because i think it's like an original present i'm thinking because i think i paid a little bit for this one but this is the birds oh sweetheart of the rodeo and I imagine a lot of you is probably familiar with birds, but if you ain't, man, you gotta change that. You gotta change that as soon as you can. It's a record that it just absolutely perfect. I mean, and it opened up so many doors. I don't think you'd have folks like uh, maybe Steve Earle or folks like that that, uh, that do what they do. You know, they might not have come around if it wasn't been folks like the birds. So Graham Parsons, I mean, he was a freaking genius. Gone long before his time. And it's, uh, it's a damn good record. If you've never watched the movie that uh, I think Johnny, what's his name from Jackass? Old Johnny, uh, Johnny Knoxville, he plays in it. And it's called uh, Grand Theft Parsons. And it tells a story. I'm sure they add a lot of shit to it, but they tell the story about uh, how Graham wanted to be, uh, didn't want to be buried and stuff. And, and it's about old Phil, old, uh, Road Mangler, I think that's who uh, Johnny Knoxville plays in there. And he made a pat with Graham about, you know, burning his body. And he uh, he steals his damn coffin, takes it out to the desert, lights him on fire. I mean, that part's true. But if you've never watched it, uh, check it out. You can probably buy it on eBay or it might be on Netflix or some shit, I don't know. But I bought it on DVD for three or four bucks. It came out maybe 10, 15 years ago. But it's uh, pretty good. This record right here, it's from old J.J. Kale, naturally. It's one that I bought not too awful long ago. I have been getting into J.J. Kale more and more. And it's, uh, and it's one that I, when I first bought it, I listened to it probably two or three times in a row. So if you ain't familiar with old J.J. Kale, you uh, check it out. Like I said, it's, it's a damn good one. But I'm going to show you, before I take me a... Uh, Another little break here. I'm going to try to warm up because I am about to, it's cold. It's, it's down to about 50 now. It's getting pretty, pretty chilly in here. But it, uh, I'm going to show you a few of my Glen Campbell records. Now, I don't have a whole lot of them. I just kind of have, uh, I mean, I, I like Glen, don't get me wrong. I'm not the biggest fan of him in the world. But, I mean, a lot of his stuff is great, don't get me wrong. But this one right here is uh, Glen Campbell. It's called I Remember Hank Williams. And Glenn does a uh, tribute to Hank, and I mean, he does an amazing job with it. If you're a fan of Glenn Campbell, or if you're just a fan of, of Hank and want to hear Glenn do his stuff, uh, check this one out. He's, like I said, it's a damn good one. This one right here is probably one of the better live albums that I've heard. It's, it's, really, it's really good. I mean, Glenn's got one of them boys. I mean, there's a reason why he kind of transcended over to the pop side of things so much, because he did have a voice that was made for stuff like that. I mean, he could do country songs, don't get me wrong, but he had just a, a hell of a voice, hell of a musician. I mean, he played with all these big acts before he kind of went out on his own and things. So this is, uh, Glenn, Glenn, uh, if I can talk, Glenn Campbell Live, the two-record album from his sellout show in uh, New Jersey. You can probably find this one probably not too awful expensive, I'd imagine. But it, likewise, it's a, uh, it's a damn good record that if you're a fan of Glenn Campbell, if you ain't heard it, you're really going to enjoy it. You don't even, 
ain't familiar with Glenn, you, you would enjoy it. But when it comes to Glenn's uh, just solo albums, this one right here is one that's one of my favorites. This one right here is called Burning Bridges. It's got a, quite a few good songs on there. And it's one I think everything kindly just it flows really good. And it just, uh, it's one I, every now and again, I set her down and listen to it. And it's just a beautiful piece of, of music. So if you've never heard it, check it out. But I am going to run in the house here for a minute because like I said, I am about to, I'm getting a little chilly back here and I'm gonna go warm up for a minute. But I'll be right back and we'll uh, finish this one up and check out what records I got left in this old crate here. <laughs> I didn't go in the house. Started thinking if I go in there and get real warm and come back out of here, I'm liable to be in worse shape than I was. And I ain't got too many more records to show you. But something I meant to say, you know, I got all my records kind of in alphabetical order. Not so much by the the album name, but by the artist or the band or whatever. That's kind of how I have it. Now this crate that I'm showing you is A through C in my collection. Now I'm sure that you're probably thinking. I didn't see no Bobby Bear, I didn't, which we ain't got that far yet. But there ain't no David Allen Cole, there ain't no Johnny Cash in this crate. The way I kind of do it, that way I can just keep up with them better, is if I have more than four records from somebody. Like with Cash, I probably got 30 records. I put that stuff in a crate with, like Cash that's in there, I believe, with like Merle Haggard and stuff like that. I keep the stuff I have quite a bit of, you know, together. But this is A through C of records, like I said, that I have less than four for artists, and uh, if you're kind of curious of how I got them arranged or whatever. But I didn't see this one a minute ago. It fell fell on the floor. It was behind something else, but uh, before I forget, this is old Scott H. Byram and Jesse Dayton. They done a little 45 together with David Allen Coe's Monkey David Wine, and Gary Stewart single again. It's on Bloodshot Records. I don't know if it's still available, but man, it's a good one. If you can find it, make sure you pick it up. But hell, this next record here, the first time I heard it, or yeah, I guess the first time I heard this record, I was probably about 13 years old, something like that, and it just absolutely just blew me away. And I mean, that's putting it lightly. I mean, it just absolutely just, it's one of them records that I've it's one of my top five records of all time. And it's one that, that just, uh, over the years, I've listened to it and listened to it and listened to it. It's one that, to this day, if I have a shitty day and my mind's going crazy and just won't shut down and I'm trying to lay down and I'm just worrying about this, thinking about this, I mean, you all know how that shit goes sometimes. I put this record on, or I don't put it on, I'll uh, pull it up on my phone, put headphones in, and usually the first couple tracks, I'll chill out enough to kindly find peace and and lay down. But like I said, this is one of my top five records of all time. It is the Cardigans, Gran Turismo. And like I said, this record right here means the absolute world to me. When I first started collecting vinyl, this thing had not been reprinted. And I think the cheapest you could find it was on disc golf and shit for like $500. And I mean, I wanted to hear it on vinyl so bad. I used to get drunk and I mean, it's pretty bad when you get drunk and talk yourself down, but I used to think about getting it all the time. And finally, I waited long enough, thank the Lord, until they re-released it. And I believe it's pretty easy to find now. If you've never heard it, you check it out. Cause I guarantee that most of you that are familiar with the cardigans are probably familiar with this song right here. You about to about to see. Love me, love me, say that you love me, fool me, fool me, go on and fool me. And hell there ain't nothing wrong with that. It's a damn good song. That's how I found out about them. But Nina Pearson, I think she has one of the just best voices period of all time. I could listen to her sing all day. It's like an angel to me. I mean she just has the voice of what I imagine an angel would sound like. I mean, I just love her. I love the Cardigans. They're a band that I've listened to, like I said, for a long time. 
this next record it's it's nothing real special i don't know if it's an official release it's just like a remix album of a uh, gran turismo it's pretty good but i'd recommend picking the the original record up before if you like this one if you already have that one or just want to check this one out it's good but make sure you pick the uh the original release up but this is the carter family keep on the sunny side I just, when it comes to harmony and stuff, I don't think that you can really get much better than the Carter family. You know, they're a, a band that when I hear them, I think of like growing up, my grandma listening to them and stuff, and it's just stuff like that takes me back. And it, uh, I ain't gonna talk on it too much. I get, I start talking about stuff like it, I get all, get all emotional and shit. But uh, another one, Carter family, I walk the line, it's, it's a Carter family record, friends. I mean, you can't can't go wrong with them. I mean, if you ain't listening to these, make sure you pick them up. But somebody that I think gets overlooked quite a bit in uh, country music is old Ray Charles. And you know, folks want to just think of him as like a you know R and B Motown singer. I mean, whatever you want to call it. But I mean, some of the best country records, man. Is, it's Ray Charles records. Some of the shit he put out, you know, especially like, you know, country and western meets rhythm and, rhythm and blues. I'm about to show you that one here in a minute. I mean, in my opinion, it don't get much better. But this is old Ray Charles' uh, crying time. But if you've never heard this one, make sure you check it out. Like I said, it's just another one that's uh, absolutely amazing. Now this one right here, Ray Charles' country and western meets rhythm and blues. It's just... It's perfection. I mean, this record right here is just absolutely perfection. And Ray Charles, in any genre, I mean, he has hands down one of the best voices ever. I mean, he's just somebody that, I mean, what God didn't give him when it comes to sight, he made up for it in that boy's voice. I mean, he just, uh, one of the absolute best. I mean, Ray Charles is just, he's a hero of mine. He's somebody that uh, I just, I listen to him all the time. And if you ain't, I mean, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Ray Charles, but if you ain't listening to a lot of his country stuff, you need to. This record right here is one that uh, I want to think that uh, that I seen Travis Egner post at one time, maybe, and that's when I bought it. I might be wrong. This is uh, Ray Charles sings something special for young lovers. It's a record, man. It's it's one that I still I just listened to it like four or five days ago. It's one that I just, I wear out. It's one that just means the world to me. And if you ain't heard it, man, you just have to check it out. Which I won't spend too much time on these. This is just an old Christmas country record. I mean, it's just an old compilation. It's got Hank Jr. doing Little Drummer Boy. And it's got Johnny Lee and Tom Paul and, and uh, Mel Tillis on air. I mean, it's just an old country Christmas record. I mean, it's kind of what you expect, but it's one that I put on there around the holidays. But hell, we're getting into a heavy hitter right here. This record, man, it, the uh, it's one the first time I heard it, it blew me away. It's one that to this day, when I listen to it, you know, just I feel the same listening to it now as I did the first time I heard it. And I guarantee it's probably quite a few of y'all's it might be your favorite record. I mean, it's it's definitely one of my probably top twenty. This is so uh, Guy Clark's old number one, and you just there ain't much you can say. I mean, just it's perfection. I mean, if you ain't heard it, man, you just you have to check it out. Well, this right here is, I think, one of the best pickers. Period. Not just country music, but just in music general is old Roy Clark. I mean, a lot of you, I mean, sure a lot of you are familiar with him from Hee Haw and all that stuff, but uh, old Roy was flat out a monster on the guitar. He could wear it out. So if you've never listened to, to much of Roy's solo stuff, man, you, you gotta change that. Well, the record I'm about to show you is from a fellow that uh, a lot of folks around here are familiar with. Probably if you get real far away from here, you probably Probably might not be familiar with him. He played with Ralph Stanley for a long time. He put out uh, four or five, I mean, maybe more, but I got 
I only got a few of them. I've only seen four or five of them, but he put out some solo stuff of his own on Rebel Records, the uh, record label that a lot of them Clitch Mountain Boys, uh, Gospel Records, and a lot of Ralph Stanley's records come out on. I think it may have been Ralph's record label. But this is Curly Ray Klein's Why Me Ralph. And, uh, man, it's a damn good one. When it comes to bluegrass records, and I mean, Curly Ray was funny as hell. I mean, there's a lot of comedy segments and stuff on here. I'm pretty sure old Keith Whitley's on this one. And he does a little skit with, with Curly Ray, and uh, it's just a damn good one, friends. If you've never heard of old Curly Ray Klein, and if you can find any of his records, shouldn't be too expensive, but if you can find any of them, make sure you pick them up. Now, this right here is another Curly Ray record. This one right here is called Fishing for Another Hit. And it's one that, man, it just... It's hard to beat. I mean, these old records like this, what blows me away is there's just so many great records out there that most people have never heard. And I mean, I'm constantly, you know, I'm always searching for new music naturally for the Old Soul Radio Show, but I'm always looking for new old music because there's so much shit out there that if you don't go looking for it, it's gonna have a hard time finding it. And like I said earlier, that's why social media, you know, the thing I like about it is to be able to follow people that I know are knowledgeable that share stuff that, uh, you know, stuff I might not know about myself. I mean, I don't know everything. I mean, I, I know very little when it compares to how much music is out there. And it, uh, it means the world to me when I can find stuff like this. Like I said, this is old Curly Ray Klein fishing for another hit. If you can find any of these records, make sure you pick them up. I mean, I couldn't recommend them enough. Old Curly Ray was a hell of a dude. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. Pat Klein, greatest hits. I mean, Pat Klein, one of the best voices ever in country music. Gone way too soon. She's somebody that, when I listen to her, I think of my grandma, and she loved Pat Klein. My grandma had a beautiful voice. She would sing some of Patsy's stuff from time to time, and just, it's Pat Klein. I mean, you, you can't hardly beat it. And this is just another one, Pat Klein's Golden Hits. It's another one that I've had for a while listen to it all the time. This one, when I just showed you, if you're wanting to pick up some records from Patsy Klein to kind of get you started, I mean, these two are taking you a long way. This next one here is from a fella that I didn't realize how many number one hits and stuff that he had or that he helped write until uh, I was reading something about him a while back. But old John Conley's Rose Colored Glasses, back in the 80s. I mean, this man, he was a, he was a hit maker. He churned them out quite a bit. He's somebody growing up, you know, I just, I have a lot of memories listening to his stuff. Common Man and Rose Color Glasses and all that stuff. I mean, that's just country gold right there to me. But another one here, this is just uh, John Conley's Greatest Hits. It's one that if you want to pick up a record, get you started with him. You really can't go wrong with this one. Like I said, old John Conley's one that, uh, well, he surely missed, I can tell you that. He's somebody that I listen to all the time growing up. But another record here, this one right here, was pretty uh, a pretty big hit back when I was a kid. I remember you couldn't hardly listen to the radio and not hear this one on there. It's old, back before he changed his name, back when he was old John Cougar, old Johnny Cougar. This is uh, Nothing Matters and What If It Did. I guess there's a lot of truth to that right there. It's one that uh, I don't listen to it a whole lot. You know, from time to time, I'll, I'll break it out. But old Johnny Cougar, man, back in the day, he uh, there wasn't nobody hardly bigger. But this one right here, it's just some country western radio hits. It's got different stuff on there. There's some Hank Williams, Health and Happiness Show, some Roy Acuff stuff on here, Sons of the Pioneers. It's just a good little compilation. And I like stuff like this, you know, sometimes I just put them on and just, I love listening to the Hank So Mother's Best Recordings and the Health and Happiness shows and the old radio shows. I just love to listen to it and think about all the folks that were sitting around the radio and that shit would go on like 7 a.m. in the morning, you know, but people would, would get up and kind of maybe plan their day around listening to old Hank Williams on the, on the radio, stuff like that. Just, it means the world to me. But speaking of old Hank, it's right here. This fella right here is, uh, when it comes to songwriters and stuff, as a piano player and everything, he just, when I think of a, a piano player, 
in country music or just music in general, you know, somebody that, that's going to quickly come to my mind is old, old Floyd Kramer here. This record right here is one that he does a tribute to Hank Williams. He plays a bunch of Hank songs on there and just, you can't beat it. It's got Alone and Forsaken on there, which is my favorite Hank Williams song, and it's one that I think is like criminally overlooked. You know, it's, I, me and Abe Parker was talking about it a while back, and Abe said it's just one that's too damn sad. And he might be, be on to something, but it's this one right here, old uh, Floyd Kramer plays in Lone Forsaken on here. It's a beautiful rendition. So if you've never heard of this, make sure you check it out. This one right here, I bought it, uh, I don't know, a couple years back. And the reason I bought this record is the song on Shooter's Jennings' last record, I think it's called Shooter. The song he does about uh, about the colonel, he talks about uh, John puts another quarter in the jukebox and plays Someday Never Comes. I bought the 45 for Sunday Never Comes and I had it for you, uh, framed and I sent it to Josh Green and Josh asked me, he's like, why did you send me this like random CCR 45? And I said, I told him, I said, that's a song that the shooter talked about John playing. And I bought just this 33 right here just because that song's on it. I mean, it's a damn good record. You can't go wrong with CCR. But it's one that uh, every now and again I'll, I'll break her out and spend her a time or two. It's one that uh, it was hard to beat. And we're getting pretty close to the end of this one. I got quite a few records in here from old Jim Croce. And Jim Croce, I got turned on to him when I was a kid by my dad. And it wasn't my dad telling me about Jim Croce. I had a aunt and uncle that lived in Catlicksburg, Kentucky. And my aunt passed away. I mean, how many found this date? She passed away back in the early 2000s, 2004, five, something like that. My aunt Christine Muncie, but my uncle Troy Muncie, he still lives there. And uh, downstairs in their house, like in their basement, they had like a, a like a game room that had a pool table and stuff in it. And they had a bunch of old tapes and stuff down there. And I can't remember what format it was. It might have been like 8mm or something. I don't know. But it was like cassettes of, uh, or tapes of my dad and my cousin, my dad's first cousin, Troy Jr., singing on there. And there's a, a tape of my dad singing uh, Bad, Bad Leroy Brown. And I remember listening to it as a kid. And I thought, I just cracked up, you know, me being a kid, hearing my dad singing when he was a kid. And that's kind of like how I got turned on to Jim Croce, and I've been a fan of Jim Croce ever since. This one right here is uh, Jim Croce, uh, Jim Croce uh, Photographs and Memories. I mean, it's a damn good record. It's one that uh, I mean, I've, I'm surprised it still works. I've played it so much. Well, this one right here is Jim Croce's I Got a Name. It's another one. I mean, all these records are just perfect, classic records. I mean, Jim Croce's another one we, we lost way too soon. And I just, he's one, when I think about folks that uh, never, that we lost at such early age, I just wondered, you know, I, I guarantee the stuff that he would have put out, if, if the Lord would have let him stick around a little bit longer, would have would have been special. But this is another Jim Croce record. You don't mess around with Jim. And it, uh, just like the other ones, man, it's, it's perfect. You can't beat old Jim Croce. If you're... I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with him, but if you've not uh, if you've not listened to him a whole lot, you need to dig in deep. He's, he's one of the best to ever do it. And this one right here is just uh, a compilation, his greatest love songs. But I mean, it's got everything on it. It's a heavy hitter. It's one I listen to quite a bit. So, like you said, you can't go wrong with a little Jim Croce. But the last one I got to show you on this episode here, this is one that... Uh, I'm trying to remember if it's my buddy Steve from Oregon or my my brother old Brian Grell. I think it may have been Steve that had this one signed for me. It's just Charlie Crockett's The Valley. He mailed it to me, old Charlie signed her to me and Charlie Crockett, man, you, you can't beat him. When it comes to folks like I was talking about Luke Bell, when it comes to folks that's making traditional country music nowadays, old Charlie Crockett is hard to beat. My friends, I hope y'all enjoyed this show right here. It, uh, 
it's been fun doing it. You know, this is kind of like taking the Instagram or something like that to another level. But that's the cool thing about this video show. You know, for me, it's probably about the same transition as it was from folks back in the day that went from radio to TV. Like I seen on Google, Fallon was laughing. She showed me like some of my Google search results. People was typing in WB Walker TV show. And I guess it kind of is almost like a TV show. But it's pretty cool to be able to show y'all shit that it just without visual, you know, there's no way of, of really doing it. I'm looking forward to seeing where this show goes going forward. And man, the sky's the limit. I've I got all these crazy ideas of stuff I want to do. Naturally, when I get musicians here, we're going to do that. But I just have so many ideas of things that uh, I want to work up, things I want to do. Now, uh, with the first episode, I know a few of you told me that there was an issue with the lighting. I had my camera just on like a generic setting instead of like a manual setting. And I didn't know it had like a lighting feature that would raise up and down or whatever. And uh, I got that fixed, hopefully. I think I do anyway. Going forward, and I know there was a little bit of issue with audio being kind of low when me and Darren was when Darren was playing while I was talking and I didn't have much choice I had put the microphone too close to me and it picked up too much of uh, just the background noise and stuff I know next time to make sure I kind of pull it back you know what I mean but I'm not a cocky person but I will say that uh, the first video show was a whole hell of a lot better than the first podcast I ever put out and I mean, it's just gonna get better going forward, so just uh, stick around. I got some pretty cool stuff lined up for you. I just wanna say thank you for uh, sticking around and checking this show out. I meant to mention it earlier, but when it comes to the salute I do at the beginning of the shows, if you want to get your, possibly get your hometown saluted, comment your name and uh, where you're from, and we might try to do that for you. But hell, y'all take it easy and you have your good one. And uh, we'll see you soon. That clock's called a scene. Time sure does fly by when you're having fun. So would you mean we've been here about as long as we're welcome? Yeah, I reckon it's about time to get a satchel and go, huh? That's right. Well, hell, friends, as long as old 12 Folk Creek don't rise too high on me here, I'll be back with you this upcoming Wednesday for a brand new episode of the Old Soul Video Show. If you like what you've seen this evening and you ain't already done it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Turn the little bell notifications on so you know exactly when I upload it, like I said, every Wednesday. If you like the video, give her a like. I love hearing what you think about it, so leave me a comment. If you comment me your name and where you're from, Hell, you never know, we might be saluting you next week. Hell, friends, if you ain't familiar with the Old Soul Radio Show, you can listen to my podcast every Friday. You can listen directly over at wbwalker.com. You can listen on your Apple device on the podcast app, or you can listen on your Android device over there on the old Stitcher app. But hell, wbwalker.com forward slash stores where you can go to uh, check out my wares. Patreon.com forward slash Old Soul Radio Show is where you can make a monthly pledge and help out here with the podcast and the video show. Now with every pledge, you unlock a post that has a link to this old camera up here in the barn and grill. Now this thing's 24-7. If you want to be a fly on the wall and check her out, there you go. If you want to see what I'm listening to, come on in and join me. Hey friends, you can find me on the Facebooks at Facebook.com forward slash Old Soul Radio Show. I'm on the Instagram, it's Old Soul Radio Show. I'm on the Twitter, at Old Soul Radio. But friends, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for taking the time out of your busy schedule here once again to join me here in, I guess, West Virginia for another mighty fine, another mighty fine broadcast of the Old Soul Video Show. Y'all be good to one another, love one another, take care of one another. And like I said, the good Lord's willing, I'll be back with you next Wednesday for a brand new episode here of the Old Soul video show. Oh.